Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to record the output of tracks, pre-fader, and pre-effects in Reaper. So I have a project set up here, and it's a perfect example of why you might want to record the output of your tracks in Reaper. And in the newer versions of Reaper, we could choose different ways to do it. I have a MIDI track up here with a VST instrument on it, triggering our drums. And I'm sending it to different tracks so I can hear each drum and mix them individually. We have one for kick, snare, toms, overheads, and rooms. And then a few music tracks to play along. Let's hear what it sounds like now. So I've gone ahead and mixed it, got the levels for each drum perfect. But now I want to record all the audio to their tracks, just so I could turn this track off and just deal with it as audio. So I'd put these tracks into record by dragging them down. Let's select all of them. And let's change the input to none, because we don't want to record input to these tracks. We want to record the output of these tracks. The audio from our drums being sent to these tracks. So we go over here and change the recording mode. Go to record output and choose what type of file we want to record. Now for my kick and snare, I want them to be mono. So let's just select the kick and snare and choose record output, record output mono. And I'm going to use latency compensated so it stays in time with the song and adjusts for any latency from our plugins. So I'll choose this for the kick and snare. And for the toms, overheads, and rooms, I'm going to choose record output, record output stereo, latency compensated. So these tracks will be recorded stereo. But if you notice down here, there's three different options that go with it. And by default, this option is chosen. But in the newer versions of Reaper, these two new options were added. We're going to go over that in this video. But by default, if we use this, which is how it always worked before, let's check out the problem. Again, it's going to record the output of these tracks. Let's record it. And notice, it sounded fine during recording. Take our tracks out of record. And let's mute this one so we don't hear this track playing into these tracks and hearing our drums twice. So we'll mute this. And let's hear it back and notice the difference. Notice how much lower the drums sound. Before, and after. And the reason for this is like I said, we're recording the output of these tracks to this. And because I mixed the drums already, notice their volumes are below zero. This one's down more than five dB. It's recording that output to the track. And it's playing back on the track using that same volume. So this track, is now 5 dB lower, because the gain reduction of the fader is happening twice. And usually, you don't want that. So for this use, we probably want to choose the other options. So let's undo it. And instead, let's select all the tracks and change it from post-fader to pre-fader. 
So now, if we record the output of our tracks, it's going to ignore the faders. It's not going to reduce the level by these amounts. So it should sound exactly the same before recording and after. So let's do it again. Again, we'll take them out of record, mute this track, and now let's hear it back. It sounds exactly the same. Before, and after. So that works perfectly as long as you don't have any plugins on this track. Let's undo it. But let's say we do. Let's turn these effects on. As we can see right here, I have compression and EQ on each track. Let's select them all and go here. And with this mode, and even the previous mode, it's going to record those plugins to the track which again, can cause a problem. Let's choose this option again. With our plugins on the track, let's hear it sounds now while recording and compare it to playback. Notice there's a lot more compression and EQ on the tracks. But if we take it out of record and mute this one and play it back, now there's twice as much compression and EQ before and after. Just like before, we're now printing our effects to the track and then playing them back with those effects again. So we're hearing the effect twice. And typically, you don't want to do that. You want to print the tracks with no effects and without our fader. This way, it'll play back exactly the same after recording. So let's undo all this, select the tracks, and this time we're going to choose record output. Pre effects, which is also pre fader. So now, if we record to these tracks, it's not going to record the fader or the effects to the track. We'll just hear that stuff afterwards. So again, we'll take the tracks out of record and mute this track, and it should sound exactly the same. As we didn't print our effects or the volumes on the track, it recorded the tracks pre-volume and pre-effects, which is typically more useful for something like this. Let's hear it. Before. It sounds exactly the same. But now we have the benefit of tweaking our mix, readjusting the levels or the compressors or EQ without printing those effects or the volumes. So it's a lot more useful 
for situations like this. We want to print our tracks while recording from one to the other using pre effects or pre volume in the process. So that's pretty much it. That's how to record the output of tracks using pre fader and pre effects in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Mm -hmm.